Hey guys, it's Mike. It is Monday, December 19th, and it is cold and raining outside. It's just a nasty day. So that's going to give me an excuse to work on these two guitars. Now, I bought these guitars off of eBay. You can see they're completely hollowed out. There's no frets, nothing. No tuners, no pickups, no electronics, nothing. The seller I believe is James Rood Guitars, R-O-O-D Guitars, and I believe he's out of California. So this guitar here, with shipping, came to something like about $90. I think it was a little less, maybe $88, $89. This guitar with shipping, it's mahogany. You can see the stain. It looks very beautiful. This was, let me, I think this was $75. This was cheaper. And here's the thing. There's another one I picked up off of his site. It just came out. It's an off-white, antique white. He was selling that with shipping for $45. So that's on the way, too. So I bought three of these things, which means I've got to sell some in order to make some room, which I do have one, in fact, up for sale in Agile. It's a beautiful guitar, but trying to sell stuff on Craigslist sometimes can take a very long time. So what I'm going to do today because of the, uh, the weather... I'm going to uh, put the frets in, at least on this one. If I have the, uh, the time and the patience, I'll do this guitar also. Otherwise, we'll just wait on the brown guitar. But the burst I'm going to do today, and uh, I'll film it as much of it as I can to show you how to put the, uh, the frets in, okay? And you can see it's already pre-slotted, so I don't have to do any slotting. And it has the binding and, and all that stuff. And the fretboard actually feels very, very good. All right, so uh, this is going to be a nice little project. When I'm done, it's going to be a really, really good guitar because what I decided to do with these is because I'm really building it myself, I'm going to put in some really quality parts in quality electronics so that it's a very, very nice sounding and playing guitar. All right, so I'll be back in a little bit. Let me get started. I got to get the um, the fret press out and all that good stuff, and get going. Be back. Now, to do the fret work, you're going to need, of course, frets. And I got these from Philadelphia Luthier. They are radius, pre-radius. You can see, 12 inches, which is the radius of the fretboard. You're going to need some tools, not a lot, but you're going to need fret cutters and fret cutters are flat at the very tip you see here there's no slope on the pliers it's straight across flat and the reason for that is because when you cut the frets and I'll show you this later you need to have a very very flush flat cut so this is one type here I like these the best um, but you can also get these fret pliers. See how flat it is on top? Let's see if I can focus that for you. You can see it there. And that's what you want. It has to be very, very flat. This is the fret press. And you can see that it has an arched piece right here that slips into the upper piece. Very technical terms, huh? <laughs> but the lower piece here, what that is, is that's the radius of the fret. I get some light on it there. And so this here will push down on the fret and press it into the fretboard. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. I mentioned in a previous video when I did some fret work that this fret press is very effective, but it's the most awkward thing. It's very clumsy. I don't know why it doesn't come with a proper base. You can see that's part of the problem right there. So it becomes a balancing act. But... Uh, once you get the hang of it, it actually works pretty well. Now, when we get up here, I'm not going to be able to use the fret press. So what I'm going to have to do is I have to do this the old fashioned way, which is to use a, a hammer, a fret hammer, and bang the frets in. So when you use the hammer, you always bang the sides in first and then the center part of the fret. And the reason for that is because when you bang the sides in and then you bang the center in, there's little tangs. Let me see if I can show you on the frets. You see those little tangs? They're very sharp. 
So when you bang the sides in first and then the center, the tangs actually dig in to the fretboard, and that's what keeps the fret down. If you bang here first, and then you bang the sides, what's going to happen is, most likely is you're going to have the center of the fret's gonna pop up on you. So, sides first, then the center, so that the tangs push out. But when I get there, I'll show you that again. All right, so I'm going to start putting the, um, the frets on, and I'm gonna show you how it is I measure it and ensure that I'm cutting them properly. All right, so let me switch to the other camera. Okay, so here's a fret, and what I've done is I've just taken it and I've just laid it down across the fretboard, right where the, uh, the fret slot is. So now what you want to do is you're going to take a marker, a black magic marker, and what you'll do is you're going to mark the fret right before where the binding starts. Okay, so I don't want to do this yet. Let me just point it out. Use a screwdriver to point it out. So you can see here, this is where the binding starts on the fretboard. I hope you can see that. So I'm going to mark the fret right here with the black marker. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. Right before where the binding starts, a little further in, I'm going to mark it again. And that's where I'm going to cut the, the fret. So I'll cut here. And then I will cut across the top of the tangs. Top of the fret will still be there. The bottom is what I'm cutting out. And then I will cut down. And I'm doing this using the fret pliers. They're very sharp. So what will happen is this whole piece here, a big rectangular piece, will come out. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I will mark it, then cut across above the tangs, and then snip down. And again, what will happen is a rectangular piece of the fret will come out. Then what I'll do is I'll use the fret press and I'll push the fret in. What you don't want to do is you do not want those tangs to go into your binding because it'll crack the binding. You do not want to do that. That's why I'm cutting before the binding. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark it and then using the fret pliers after I mark it, I'm going to cut it out. And after I cut it out, I'll show you what it looks like so you can see what I did. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I used the marker. And this thing likes to slip around. They're very light. See? Right before the binding. Look at the right-hand side and look at the left-hand side. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip along the top of the tangs. The tangs are the little triangular pieces of the fret. That's what goes into the fretboard and keeps it anchored. Trim across the top and then trim down where that line is. And so this rectangular piece will come out. The same on this side. Then I'll take the fret press and push it in. And I will film the uh, the fret press for you. All right. So let me cut these um, these tangs out and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see what I did here. You can see here's the tangs here, and it's missing on the left, and it's missing on the right. And you can see that the tangs start right before the binding. Again, it's very important. You don't want this tang going into the binding because you'll crack the binding. And the way I trimmed it, was using these fret pliers or also referred to as fret nippers. Okay? It's got to take your time. It's bit by bit. You're not going to be able to take large chunks and take it out. If you do that, what will happen is, if you try to do that, you will bend the fret. The fret is easily bendable, so you have to keep that in mind too. All right? So now what I'm going to do is, let me get the camera set up and I'm going to press this first fret in. And I'll press the first few frets in, and I'll film it so you get the idea of how to do this. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I took the fret, and what I did was I just gently, with my hands, I pressed it into the fret slot. Here's a fret slot here, so there's one right here also. And now you have the fret press. And again, like I said, this thing here sometimes could be a bear to, to use. It's kind of clumsy. But now you can see 
where it's laying on top of the fret. All right, and make sure that you have the fret press, like here's the center point, let's just use this. Make sure it's at the center of the fret. You don't want to have uneven distribution of pressing it down. All right, now you have to be very careful when you do this because you don't want your fret to shift left or shift right because then what will happen is you're going to press the fret and crook it. That's going to be a problem because what will happen is you're going to open up this fret slot. Now to fix it, you may have to end up, well you're going to have to end up putting a new fret in most likely because the other one, the tang will be damaged, it'll be slanted on you. Um, but what you'll have to do is when you put the new one in, you may have to put a drop of glue in the slot to make sure it stays. It's not a big deal, but just a little precaution in the beginning and you won't have to deal with that. All right, so, so you make sure you watch that it's going in straight. Now to press the fret in, all we need to do is to turn this knob and we turn it clockwise. And what's gonna happen as you turn it clockwise, it's going to push the fret press down and that's gonna push the fret in. Now, the beautiful part about this and why it's better than using a hammer, a fret hammer, is the distribution of pressure pushing the fret in is nice and even. Okay, so you have less of a risk of a fret popping up on you and, and all that stuff, because that does happen when you do the hammer. Some guys are really good at the hammer piece of it. Um, I'm pretty good at it, but sometimes it can be a little exasperating when you are hammering and the fret won't stay put. You know, so but this makes sure that it pushes it in. The distribution of the pressure pushing the fret in is very uniform, and you get a nice set for the fret into the fretboard. All right, so I'm going to turn it now. I'll film it. I'm not going to film the handle, but I'm tightening it now, pushing it in. There we go. That's all you need to do. There's no need to put glue in there, okay? There's no need to put glue in there. The only time you would use glue is if the slots are a little worn or wide. But there you can see, there it is. And you can see that right here, there's no gap, no gap underneath that fret, so it went in nice. All right, so I'm going to do the, the next fret, and um, I'll be back, let me, cut the fret wire and then I'll press it in again and you'll see how this works all right so maybe two frets and you get the idea so I'll be right back okay so I have the fret press sitting on the top of the second fret and again I did the same thing I did with the first fret I just gently with my finger you know just pushed it into the slot and it's sitting there now and then I'm going to again turn the handle turn it clockwise that's going to push the, the press down and as the press goes down, it's going to push the fret into the fretboard. And you want to tighten it pretty good. Don't be afraid of pushing the fret too far in. It's not going to happen because the fret is flared. You see? And because it's flared, the, the part right here where it flares out on the left and right, that's going to sit on top of the fretboard and it's not going to go any further. So uh, let me press this one in and we'll take a look at what it looks like after I'm done. So we made progress and I was able to use the fret press up to this point. Everything from the 12th fret forward is gonna have to be hammered in. And the reason why is because what happens is, is the contour of the neck starts to get in the way of the, the cradle on the fret press. So, we'll have to hammer the rest in. Not a big deal. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim these frets up, get them really close to the fretboard. And the way you do that is you have these nippers, the ones I've been using to nip the, the tangs. And what you'll do is you'll go right up to the fret, okay, and a slight angle, maybe a 30 degree angle and then clip. And I won't clip it here because what will happen is these pieces go flying across the room. So I'll clip them and then I'll come back. Now the reason you don't want anything sharp at a 30 degree angle is because if you angle it too much, you run the risk that once you start to dress the fret, 
that means file it down so that it's nice and smooth, doesn't catch your hand, that you're going to potentially have too much of an angled part of the fret going into the playing area. So let's just say the string will sit right here, right? The high E, let's just say it sits right there. And if you start angling too much, when you press down on that string to play, you put a little pressure on that string, it's going to slide down. It's going to slide down the slope or the angle of the fret, and that's going to be, you know, a headache. So what that'll mean is you'll have to pull the fret and put a new one in and, and you know, re-angle it and, and redress it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to angle it just a little bit, 25, 30 degrees, that's it. Um, I like to leave as much playing room as possible along the, um, the fretboard from side to side um, as I possibly can. I've seen guitars um, come out of factories, especially the cheaper ones, where they actually angle it too much. And it really becomes a problem when you play. Not so much here on the low E string. It's more of a problem down here on the... Um, the high E because when you play, let's say you're playing lead guitar or you're playing chords, that string is going to slip down on you. All right, so I'm going to trim these up now and I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's trimmed up. Now, trimming it up just means that I've gotten the fret as close to the, uh, to the fretboard as possible, uh, up to the binding. And it's going to be right there with the binding because remember, we're using these nippers, these fret pliers, and you see when I close them, it's just straight across. So it's going to be a nice, flush, straight cut. And once I do that, I'll show you what it looks like, and then I'll have to use the hammer to do the rest of this, and that'll be another segment. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so let me just show you here. So we're going to use the nippers. What I did was I shortened them up as much as I possibly can using these nippers. Okay, and then I'm going to use these for the final touch. So again, see how I'm doing this? It's right flush up against the binding, and then clip. Let's go to the next one. Clip. See? That's all you need to do. And you can see it's at a very, very, very minor angle. And the reason, again, why you want to do that is because you don't want that fret ramping or sloping into the playing area. Because if you do that, you could have a problem where your string especially like I said the high E string slips down and off the fretboard and you don't want to have that happen. That's particularly a problem when you're playing down here and you're playing open chords like G, D and so on. Alright so let me finish up trimming. I'm going to do this side now and then we'll come back and we'll hammer in some frets here. Okay so both sides now are trimmed up. You can see how that's done. And I will use a fret dress file later on to smooth these edges out because right now if you put your hand across this it's sharp because the they're not filed down it's what they refer to as dressing they're not dressed properly so I'll have to do that but right now I've got it very close to the um, to the binding and I'm really happy with that now when you're going to bang frets in what you want to do is make sure you have a lot of cushion underneath the body of that guitar all right, and what I like to do actually is lift the guitar when I do this so that I'm not banging the guitar into the table because the last thing you want to do is to damage the neck. Um, I mean, it takes a lot to damage the neck, but you never know. So it's best to use an ounce of precaution. So make sure I have a very thick towel underneath the body of the, uh, of the guitar, and then I'm going to uh, start banging in the frets now. So let me hook the other camera up so I can show you how I do that. All right, so I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did was I trimmed the tangs off the sides like I showed you before. And now I just press that fret in as much as I can with my thumb. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tap in the sides of the frets first and then the center sides and the center. This is what I mentioned before because if you don't do the sides first what will happen is you bang the center in the sides will pop up right obviously. Then when you go to bang the sides in then you run the risk that the center will pop up again. So you're going to be going back and forth back and forth 
and it just becomes a hassle. So what you want to do is bang the sides in because that anchors the tangs into the fretboard. And then when you hit it dead center, head on, that will shift the fret and the tangs left and right. And that's what's going to catch the wood and keep the fret in place in the slot. Does that make sense? Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so let me uh, bang it in now and let's uh, take a look at how it comes out. So just give me one second. Okay, now remember that I have the body of the guitar cushioned with a very, very thick towel. All right, so I'm going to pick the guitar up out of the cradle. I'm not going to bang it when it's in the cradle because I don't want to put unnecessary stress on the neck. Okay, so we're going to do this again and you can see here that See the sides? There's no tang. And I'm going to place it in the fret slot. And I'm going to press it in. Here we go. Okay. So all you want to do is, a, is to get a starting point. Now, what I do then is I just tap it in a little bit. Because what I'm looking to do is to make sure that we're not going to have the, the fret go in crooked. So I want it to be as much into that fret slot as I possibly can before I whack it with the hammer. So it looks to be pretty good right now. Okay, so again, you don't need to slam the hammer into the fretboard on top of the fret. All you need to do is give it a good gentle whack, I want to say here here and then in the center and you may have to do it again it's not just a one shot deal sometimes you will get it in one shot other times it might take two or three tapping left right center left right center to get it right okay so here we go so i'm just going to put my finger here hopefully it doesn't get in the way that's one that's two and then center and you can see this popped up a little bit so we're gonna do it again one two and center and let me see again what i'll do is i'll take my flashlight and take a look and it's it's perfectly flush that's it that's how you hammer them in okay so let me do the rest of them and then I'll be back okay so the frets are all installed and they're in there nice and tight and flush so that's the uh, the biggest piece of it we're about 90% home now what we have to do is we have to file down or dress the sides because if you feel them now, I mean, it's, they're very sharp because we just use nippers to to clip the, um, the fret ends, but it's, like I said, very, very sharp. So there's a tool, a special file that you use to do this, and I'm going to pull that file out now and I'll show you how that works. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, we'll start filing down the sides of those frets and then I'll dress them with a much smaller fret file to make them very, very smooth so that when your hand goes up and down the fretboard, there's no catching or any of that stuff, okay? No sharp edges. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the tool here that begins the process of dressing the frets. And you can see that it's at an angle. It's a 45 degree angle. And it's a file. And the way it works is you place it on your fretboard like this. And then you just go back and forth. Okay? Now, don't get carried away. If you notice, what I've done is I've taped off the headstock. I taped off the body. Because if you slip with this file, you're going to damage your guitar. This file will go right through the finish. So, when you do this, go nice and slow. Nice, slow, back and forth, the full scale of the fretboard, strokes. That's what you want to do. It's going to take a while to file these down. So if you're in a rush, this is not the time to be doing this. Take your time. And by taking your time, what will happen is they'll come out real nice and you won't damage your guitar. Okay, so I'm going to start the process now of just filing the edges getting them nice and smooth, getting that little 45 degree angle. And what you do with this tool, see, you can see 45 degree angles on this end here, right? 
and then when you're done with that side, you just flip it around. And then you do the other side of the neck. That's all you do. But again, it's a file, and it's heavy, and it's coarse. <laughs> if you whack your finish with it, if you don't pad your guitar and tape it up, you're going to have a bad day. Okay? So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so dress the side of the frets. Let me see if I can show you. Hopefully this doesn't blur out, but you can see we have a, a nice 45 degree angle on the sides here. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, so it still catches. Okay, you're still going to, it's not nearly as bad. So that's why you have to use another type of tool. It's specifically made to dress the frets on the sides. And let me show you that tool. And I'm going to start using that to uh, file the sides of the frets and get it nice and smooth so that when your hand does move along the fretboard, there are no catches at all. You can see that this is work. It's not hard work, but you have to take your time. Just take your time and it will come out nice. So let me find my fret dressing tool and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is a fret dressing tool and the only side that has a grit is the sides of the tool. There's no grit on the upside or the downside. It's smooth. Now the reason why that's done is so that when you go to file to the edges, you're not damaging the fretboard because you have grit on the bottom part or the top part of this file. Only on the sides. Okay, but even though there's no grit here, you still want to be careful. Just be careful. I find the rounded side is easier and, and safer, uh, but sometimes you have to use the flatter side. You can see this is rounded. Let me see. Can you see that? The top part's a little rounded, and this is flat. But sometimes you have to use the flat because sometimes you've got to get in, let's say, in spots like right here. Okay, this is the tool that you're going to use to finish up the fret dressing so that it's nice and smooth. And it does take time. Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to do this. You'll figure it out. Basically, you know, you're going to take the file and you're going to get rid of the sharp edges, just smooth them out, and then move to the next fret and so on down the line until they're all done. And the way you're going to know that you're done is because when you take your finger and you go across the, um, go across the fretboard, you're not going to feel any catches. Like I have a catch right here. You can even hear it on my finger right here. So I'm going to fix that. Okay, so let me dress it and then I'll be back. Okay, so I used the fret dressing tool and I did all of the frets. Now when I go down the side of the fretboard, it's nice and smooth. There's no grabbing, none of that stuff. It feels great. Okay, so the next thing that I have to do is now I have to level the frets. Now just because you put new frets on the fretboard, that does not mean that the frets are level across the fretboard. All right, so you have to level them. I'm going to take a little break and I'll come back and I'll start the leveling process. When I'm done, this neck will be in great shape, great shape. In fact, it'll be so good that I'll put it up against anything that's hanging on the rack at Guitar Center or Sam Ash. And I'm talking about the expensive stuff. This neck's going to be nice when I'm done. Okay, so I'll be back in a little bit and uh, we'll finish up the fretboard and then we can move on to other stuff. All right, so I'm making my way through the frets. I wasn't sure I was going to do this today, but it's so cold and rainy outside. It's just nasty, really nasty outside. I figured, what the heck, I'll just keep going. So um, where you see the yellow tape, the frets between the yellow tape, those are frets that had to be leveled. It's really not that bad. The leveling is just maybe just flattening the fret just a little bit and then recrowning it. Not too bad at all. So the uh, the fret press really does a nice job. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. It'll probably take another hour or so to finish up the fretboard. And then I'll put some oil on the uh, on the fretboard after I polish up the frets with some uh, steel wool. And uh, she's going to be good to go. The other thing I'm going to do is, uh, of course, the guitar doesn't come with a nut, so I had a uh, an extra Tusk XL lying around. Graphite doesn't need any lubrication, so I'm going to put the tusk in. And uh, we'll do that tonight, too. And then i got to wait on the pickups. I ordered the Donless, the uh, 1960s uh, Les Paul 
style pickups, the PAFs. And they'll probably be here probably after Christmas, so that's when I'll be able to wire her up. But um, it's coming out good, I'm telling you. And my goal is to make this a really good guitar. Really, really good. So we'll see, right? I'll just keep working it. Hopefully uh, my objective materializes. Okay, so I decided to keep on going, and I finished up the frets on this guitar, installing them, leveling them, and then I polished them, and I also polished the fretboard. I put some orange glow on the fretboard. It's looking really, really good. So um, looking really nice. I was going to pack it in. I just got tired, and then I decided, well, I had like, I don't know, seven or eight frets to go <laughs> to level. So instead of looking at the mess tomorrow morning, I decided, let me just finish up tonight, clean up my uh, kitchen table here, and then it'll be a while now, probably about, I would say, two weeks before I do some more work on it because I have to wait for some parts to come in, mostly the pickups. Okay, so that's it. It's um, an AXL. Again, I think it's James Rude or Jim Rude Guitars. I'll make sure I put the link in the video so I don't screw it up on the guy. He's got some really good deals. He's out of California. Uh, the guitars can be picked up on eBay. You're gonna get them with shipping under a hundred bucks easy. So it's a good deal, okay? Good way to, uh, to do a project guitar and teach yourself how to do things without spending a lot of money. All right, you guys have a good night and uh, I'll catch you tomorrow.